Welcome. Now let's assume you've already established the theme of your world, because you are an absolute mad lad who watched our previous video. You know what game system you are going to use and your head is full of swirling random ideas. And now it's time to put all this together. From my knowledge this is done by starting to write things down or drawing a map. Writing things down might seem redundant if you already have all the information in your head, but doing so will ground your ideas in reality and allow you to properly express their often chaotic nature and it will make making connections and details far easier. A map is something that is not theoretically needed in play, especially if you like going full mind theatre, but I implore you to make at least the most basic of outlines for the places your players are going to be in, because without solid template it's easy even for experienced DMs to become lost in the geography and scale of their world, and it often leads to confusion and inconsistency. Establishing places by drawing them on a map is again a great way how to organize your ideas and put them into play. But before we get any further, I would like to give you something of a golden rule. Don't over detail. It's great to come up with an intricate crop irrigation system for your underground dwarfs, but spending 8 hours on that while you still don't know a single thing about their culture and government might not, not to mention that there aren't even any dwarves on the continent where your players are going to be on, and believe me that realizing an hour before a session that you don't have any prep because you spent your entire prep time creating an extra planner succubus brothel nightclub with the sickest rave music one can find is not a situation you want to be in. Believe me, I was there. Even though I did eventually use that nightclub a few dozen sessions later. Now I've told you what can be done, let's move on to the more important question. How? And I would say that there are two main methods. Ones I like to call the bottom-up method and the top-down method. The bottom-up method. You have just been told to write things down and draw a map but might feel overwhelmed by this Herculean task. Where should I start? What should I do? And you might have something of a choice paralysis. That's where the bottom-up method shines. Start at the most specific basic level and expand. You want your players to start in a village. And that's where your world building process shall start, with that very village. Who lives in that village? Well, there is Luke the farmer, a cheerful and handsome young man, and Bix, an optimistic hothead who wants to join the Empire's army. Oh, so this all is part of a bigger empire. Interesting. And what's the conflicts in this village? What are the players going to do there? Well, a rebel princess who opposes the Empire is supposedly supposed to be in the area and the Empire is searching for her, offering a hefty bounty for any information. She came here in search of an old ally, a hermit wizard named Ben, a long-retired war veteran who protects the village from raiders. He is secretly here to take care of Luke because he killed his father in the war. Oh, so there is a resistance against the Empire. There was a war recently. None of that is really immediately important, but it comes in handy. The raiders are a nice conflict the players may want to pursue for some gold or fame. Anything else about the village? Anything that makes it unique? Well, every now and then some strange, shady, enigmatic merchants from the deserts come here to bargain and they deal in all sorts of magical and non-magical stuff. But they are always hooded and no one has ever seen one's face. Oh, a mystery. Mysteries are great tools to establish future plot lines. But now that we know something about the village, tell me something about what's close to the village. Well, the village close to a nearby bustling trade town, a complete hive of scum and villainy. That sounds interesting. Tell me something more about that sound. I hope this example showed you at least a little bit about what bottom-up world building means. You start with the most pressing and elemental things first, and then you expand from there. 
you start with the village, then you move to the surroundings, then to the county, then to the duchy, then to the kingdom, then to the empire, then to the continent, and so on and so forth. Into the mouth. Nice. This method is better if you want a more linear campaign, as you can then really detail the places where you want your players to be in and make them special and interesting. There is a fallacy, however, that you should try to avoid with this method. Don't forget that you are creating a world and not just elaborate set pieces. There is nothing wrong with only detailing the places where you want your players to be. On the contrary, trying to detail every remote village that probably won't be at all important or relevant in your game will sooner or later probably lead to a burnout. But the rest of the world should not be an utter blank space. You should have at least some faint idea of how the bigger whole operates. Because if you don't, there is a big chance that the world might become confusing and inconsistent to your players. All in all, this is a method I would recommend if you are going for a linear story-driven campaign or if you don't want to spend an exorbitant amount of time on the inner workings of a world. But now on the other side of the coin, we have the top-down method. The top-down method. This method is practically the direct opposite of the bottom-up method. You start with the bigger picture and you fill in the details once it all makes sense to you. This can be done in quite a few number of ways. One option is to create a history of your world. Just very roughly, again no minor details, just focus on the major turning points and events and suddenly things might start making sense by themselves. For example, what if the elven civilization was dominated by the expansive humans? Well, then it would make sense that there would be elven ruins all over the human empire, and the elves might be a dying race now. A very common trope. Just by creating these events, you can give life to your cultures and people. If you don't like history, you might want to focus on how magic works and affects your world. Where did it come from? What does each civilization think about it? Are there some who despise it or consider it pure evil? Does it make you bold with blue lips? Which is a much more common trait in media than one would think. Feels good, doesn't it? You can also always start at the complete beginning. How was your world first created and who created it? Who are the gods of this world and how do they operate? What are their powers? Why was this whole world created? Essentially, top-down method is thinking about an idea you have and asking yourself why, how and so on. While a bottom-up world builder might just say that their empire is totalitarian, you would want to ask how it became so, what led to that, and what was before that. If you want your campaign to take place on a specific continent, then create the map for the continent first. Then create the geography and then fill it with your nations. Oh, this nation is in a very mountainous region. They will probably have access to metals, gold and jewels. Oh, this nation controls the only pass between the two halves of the continent. They will probably make a lot of money from trade there. You basically just want your world to make complete sense to you before you go into the game. You then just add logical details where it is currently needed. You don't have to have a detailed map of every city, but you know basically why a city is important, what are the landmarks and how it works. If your players decide to go there, creating a map is the easiest thing you can do. If you want to create a sandbox campaign, it is almost essential to use this method unless you are a master improviser. Creating a world in this way takes a lot more time, but once you finish it, it can reduce your prep time by a massive amount and makes improvisation much more manageable. Playing an NPC is much easier if you know what culture they are from, what they want and what they dislike. You now don't have to prepare for a specific situation your party might do, you just create a logical reaction to their actions based on your world. 
if your NPC is human. He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe! Then it is only natural that he is going to be angry if the party teams up with an eccentric, chuckling, incompetent troll lich. What? And that's about it. Again, there is more to talk about, but these are the main points I wanted to make. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to comment and we will try to answer. Next time we shall try to tell you some ways how to possibly detail your world a little bit more. The tavern's closing for now. You are all welcome when we open again. Fare thee well.